All right, so I'm going to go over how to create the avalanche in After Effects. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the um, the Sandstorm from Production Crate. And to do that, you're going to have to log in. Um, so yeah, I signed in with my Google account. Um, it's free to get like a, a basic account, so it's fine. So you're going to want the Sandstorm. So the one I downloaded is um, this free one, and that's what I use for most of the avalanches. Um, that should be in the zip folder that's over in the project. Um, I also use this one a lot. Uh, in case you can't find it in that zip folder, it is on product or footage crate. I guess it used to be production crate, but it's it's on this website. Um, yeah, see productioncrate.com. Okay, so after you get the sandstorm, you're gonna wanna import it into After Effects along with your mountain scene. Okay, so now that I have all the assets imported, I'm going to go ahead and make a new composition. Uh, let's go 1920 by 1080. Um, I probably want it to run for about five seconds. That's of course dependent on how long they want the timing to be. So I've got the new composition here. Go ahead and name it. Uh, oh, what I do? Go ahead and name it Avalanche. <laughs> okay, so now you would just put the background photo, scale it up. Oh, too fast. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing all that. Okay, there we go. I'm just holding it on shift. Scale it up a bit. Maybe make the quality a little better. All right. So this is your base background, pretty much. So what you want to do is I would take this um, this one where the sand is going towards the side, and I would actually just make a new composition with that. So you right click, go new comp from selection. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make this sand look like snow. Um, so you go up to effects and presets. And I kind of forget what effects I had on the last one, but I'm going to assume it's a lot of color based stuff. So color correction. Let me take some hue saturation. Maybe if I could take out the saturation, it would be white. I go lighter. So yeah, it's already starting to look more like snow, like it's white. So if I play this, it's still dusty. I don't really want that. Um, let me get a curves up in here. Curves, curves. So kind of wanna. Make this look more like snow. And if you can't get it to look how you want, it's always nice to have like a reference photo. Um, but I'm not doing that all for reference photo right now. Unless maybe I stick this back in here. So yeah, this has more blue snow and this is more white. So I'm going to want to make this to match this more. Um, if that makes sense to you. So maybe if I go over to blue on this, let's see if I can make it a little more blue, maybe a little more green too. Should probably be using a different effect for this, but I'm just kind of winging it. So yeah, that looks more like snow now than it did uh, originally, because before it looked like that. So we're just going to use this for now. You could probably mess around with it more if you don't like that. But regardless, I've got that in a pre-composition. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this pre-composition of the sandstorm. You should probably rename it. Um, snow. OK, 
Okay, so yeah, I accidentally had the composition on five minutes instead of five seconds. So now we're just going to put the avalanche back in here. Or no, we're going to put the snow composition on top of background by mistake. And you're going to time remap. So that's right click, uh, time, enable timer mapping. And you're going to drag this to the end. And you're going to drag that to the end. And we're going to see how it plays out. Okay, that's good. So basically, you're just going to want to flip this. You're going to want to basically scale, uh, rotate, and translate to make this look like it's going down the mountain. And the way I did it is I used a bunch of these and I used some masks to uh, just make it look good. Uh, let me see. Here we go. <clears throat> So let me go like rotate, hotkey W, I know that one. <coughs> so if I go like that, should. So you see it already starts to look like it's going down the mountain. And if I take another one of these, put it on top. <laughs> Maybe shift it a bit. Um, position scale. And we're going to take this one and we're going to move it down a bit. Because my goal here is to have it fill like the whole bottom of the screen. So yeah, it kind of looks like it's rolling down now. Let's have this one move a bit too. Um, position, scale. Scale. Zoom. Gonna get a third one. Awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some masks on these so it doesn't look like they're all uh, blocky on the edge there. Hmm. I'm going to go like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to be able to kind of feather it in later. Um, mask. Subtract. There you go. Mask feather. There you go. So I do that, and now I go to the next one. Hmm. Nope, wrong one. Again, you want to you want it to be subtract, and you want to kind of feather it if you can, just a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot better. So you could help it even further by a. Uh, Taking this one that's in front, um, I believe it's this one, right? Yeah. So you could take this one and you could make it move uh, forward at a different rate than the others. Uh, so if I go to end here, go like that a little bit, just so it it looks uh, 
like it's farther away. And yeah, that's basically how I made the avalanche. Um, there was also another thing. If there's a if there's a thing in front like this, if you want this to be in front of the other avalanche, uh, you could do the sandwiching method. So you take this uh, background layer, you put it on the front, you mask out this part. Go like that. It doesn't have to be perfect again. It just has to, you know, look correct, I guess. Um, let me turn this back on. Yep, there we go. So now if I do that. Okay. Edit it a bit. Feather it, make it look all nice. Not like I did it in two seconds, which I totally didn't do, right? Um, so yeah, that's basically just how you get a piece of the background in front. Uh, if you just kind of sandwich it uh, with a piece of it on top, piece of it on the bottom, and then you mask top. And of course, there was another thing I did where I made the clouds move. Um, again, that's just masking. So uh, this one you would put behind the avalanche and everything. So I kind of just kind of kind of just took stuff out there. Um, I would do that, and then I would kind of feather. A lot. <laughs> and you could kind of see it. Uh, you don't want those mountains in there. So I would basically just do this kind of mask with the clouds in the background. And I would keep position. Position and scale if you want. Uh, but position is best. So position there, and at the end, I would position just off to the side a bit. You don't want the clouds moving too fast and taking attention away. Um, but you don't want that to be in front of uh, the mountain there. So to fix that, turn all that off. To fix the cloud being in front of the mountain, cover that some more. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Sorry, I keep going on tangent. <laughs> Actually, no, expand that in. Come on, mouse. There you go. Other. Okay. Yeah, so that's not an actual cloud, so it looks kind of weird, but you get the premise. Um, so, what I was going to say is. To get the cloud to go behind the mountain, you just do the sandwich method again, except this time you mask the mountain out. So you really just kind of need to do this part. Okay. So now, yeah, now it goes behind. And yeah, that's essentially how I created the avalanche scenes.